All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here, check it out. We're sitting in the uh, Freedom Studios. Last night, uh, as I was publishing some videos, I, I, I was perusing through the library of some stuff that I've done in, in several years past. One of the videos that really hit me hard was an address that I did during this Freedom March, uh, talking about the Second Amendment. Why did we have a Second Amendment? Why, why would we use the Second Amendment? There are several different reasons why. One of which is not just about tyrannical government, not just about self-protection, but it's about a lot of different things. You lose the second, you'll lose the first. And that's one of the reasons why. Uh, one of the cool things, if you'll notice in the video, there's a gentleman sitting on the, uh, on the ledge there. That's Mark Robinson, our new Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. I was really pleased to see him there. And I'll tell you what, that guy's living the dream. And I am so proud of him. Uh, Mark. Help us keep our Second Amendment, bud, especially on the North Carolina level. Roy Cooper is no friend of the Second Amendment. But in any case, this video impacted me uh, last night, and I wanted to share it with you again. So please let me know what your thoughts are. If you are finding yourselves being unsubscribed from my channel, YouTube is going through its purge deal right now. I'm not sure why they do that, but they do. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Y'all be good. I'm out of here. Take care. I have a small YouTube channel called Coda Boy 32. I like to talk about firearms, firearm safety, people in the world, and lately, as of late, politics. Because I feel like there's a huge instrument out there that is trying to destroy our Second Amendment. And I was selected here to talk about the Second Amendment, which by far is probably, in today's environment, one of the toughest of our Bill of Rights. A lot of people will be out there in the Second Amendment, the NRA, the gun lobby. I own a few firearms, and I would insist that everybody who does own a firearm, you are the gun lobby. So when people say the evil gun lobby, they're talking about you, they're talking about you, they're talking about you, they're talking about you. They're not just talking about the NRA as they would have you believe it. They're talking about 45% of the households in the United States who have a firearm. We are blessed to have forefathers who developed in 1791 our Bill of Rights. A lot of people think that the Bill of Rights were established in 1776 when the Constitution was written. It was not. It was 10 years afterwards. And they fought tooth and nail between each other. John Adams. You've got, what's the other guy? They got a Yeah, they've got uh, plays that, what's the guy who's got a play that's there? He's doing it. Yep. All those guys, they fought tooth and nails. You had the Federalists, you had Anti-Federalists. But eventually what they did was they crafted a document, a Bill of Rights that was ideal. It was timeless. And when I say timeless, it's as applicable back then as it is today. It doesn't matter. The Bill of Rights is there for you, 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 and me. And together, we have to ensure that we vote for individuals who are not prepared to remove that set of Bill of Rights from us. So I prepared a few little notes. So if you guys would bear with me. Uh, the Second Amendment. If you guys know it, say it with me. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Those are very powerful words. And you know what? If you look at the transition from the very first time they titled or authored all the, the 10 uh, first Bill of Rights, 10 Little Rules. Does that sound familiar? 10 Little Rules? <laughs> right. From the very first time that they authored the first inception to the final transition, it, had the, it was the one bill that had the least amount of verbiage that was changed which meant they knew what they were talking about. They weren't talking, they were talking about firearms of the day. Not firearms, well, we're not gonna worry about this. I've had so many people comment on my channel saying, well, they were talking about muskets. And I said, well, get it on, you better get the feather out and start writing on a piece of parchment and then get your horse and deliver that message to me. Because guess what, buddy? You're talking on new technology. I'm sickened by some of these people and their frame of thoughts, for the most part, None of these individuals have ever owned a firearm, never held a firearm, or ever fired one. So they're not dependent on individuals or that firearm to protect themselves, their family, their household, or their property. 
The Second Amendment, what does it stand for? Well, there's six parts to the Second Amendment, okay? A lot of people don't understand this, but this is, these are the reasons behind it. One, enable the people to organize a militia system. Now, a lot of people on the left would tell you, well, the militia basically it was their idea of, of, of a, a party, a group of people prior to when a national military was organized. No, it's not. Now they would say, well, it was the National Guard. No, it's not. A militia is anything that can be held. Mr. Robinson, you and I could get together. Robin, you and I get together. We're going to protect our neighborhood in case there's a natural disaster. And we don't have the ability to protect, count on law enforcement or our National Guard to come in. That is a well-regulated militia. As a military man of eight years, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's a great idea to have an ex-military guy run your neighborhood. I've got two Army Rangers, three SF guys, including myself. Number two, participate in law enforcement. So the original framers thought this was a great idea. Now, this might not be applicable today when you've got a great county and a city like this, Charlotte Mecklenburg's a tremendous and incredible uh, law enforcement department. But I guarantee you, if any one of you individuals who carry a firearm on a day-to-day -day basis as part of your CCW, if you see a law enforcement officer is over there getting his ass kicked, excuse my French, and he asks you, please, can you assist? I guarantee you, with 100% one, of my thought in mind, you will help. Number two, this is number three. This is very important. And a lot of people question this one because, oh, this could never happen. Safe guarding against a tyrannical government. Now, do you think of tyrannical government as a, as a hostile takeover? No, I don't believe it as such. But what I do believe is a tyrannical government is a government who is chipping away one piece at a time at your ever God-given rights. Every single day. You don't need that. <laughs> we, no, 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 don't worry. You don't need that. But you know what? If you need that, don't worry if you can't afford it because I'm going to take it from this gentleman over here. And that's how they roll. But that is what we call a tyrannical government. And as they take our rights away, whether we like it or not, then they are acting on aggression towards their citizens and the people. Repelling an invasion. Now, a lot of people, you remember the old comment that they supposedly Yamamoto said? It's never been proven. A lot of people say, oh, Yamamoto said this. Nah, we, maybe, maybe not. But behind every blade of grass is a firearm. Rest assured, during my lifetime, your lifetime, and my sons, my grandchildren, and everybody else, there will never be an invasion force on these soils. We are the strongest, most powerful country in the entire world. Not just simply because of our firearms, but because of you, sir, you, sir, you, ma'am, everyone sitting here. Another reason was repelling resurrection. Insurrection. Resurrection. Yeah, that was a different guy. <laughs> anyway, insurrection. Don't necessarily think that we're going to have a lot of things going on about insurrection, but if you have, say, for instance, Antifa. What if all of a sudden they had an Antifa rally in your, in your neighborhood and they were going to burn everything? Second Amendment. The most important factor of Second Amendment is not to take up arms to ward off an invasion force. Will that ever happen? I can never see that happening. We do have the, the most finest, most equipped, the most educated fighting force in the world. But number six, facilitating a natural right of self-defense. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what people, when they say we need to repeal the Second Amendment, when you have a Supreme Court justice retired, sitting there, the Second Amendment has no meaning or function these days. It tears my heart apart because I see an individual who was in charge of developing and passing judgment on laws say something that is in direct conflict of our Constitution and Bill of Rights. This is the beauty of this document that was fashioned by our forefathers. It is timeless. Once you lose one, they can just get rid of the rest. Why bother? All right, so the Bill of Rights was established in 1791. Ten easy rules to follow, but they're always under debate. Like I said, they were under debate then, and they are now. Uh, the Bill of Rights do one thing. They guarantee the 
personal freedom and rights. And they create a clear limitation on an overreaching government. And a lot of people don't understand that is the design of the Bill of Rights. And this is why they were fighting for it. A lot of people thought the Constitution had enough in there, but they wanted to put more to protect the individual person, the citizens, not the state, not the municipalities, but the people, the citizens within those reaches. Do you know the Second Amendment has been ruled on four times? Supreme Court rulings four times, okay? And this is really cool because if you follow the progression of this whole thing, it has withstood quite a bit of opinion. The first opinion was written in 1875, and here it is. The opinion is, the Second Amendment means no more than it shall not be infringed by Congress and has no other effect than to restrict the powers of the national government. Now, how cool is that? Many people don't understand that the Second Amendment was designed and put in place so that we, the people, could keep the federal government in check. And that's why it was there. For we, the people, you, sir, you, sir, you, sir, everyone here. The second time, it gets kind of interesting on the second time. This is in 1939. The ruling came out, or the opinion. The Second Amendment protects arms that had a reasonable relationship to the preservation of a well-regulated militia. I kind of think back and I was like, how did this come about? And because if you go to the third ruling, it kind of messes things up. And what the third ruling did in 2008, if you remember, it codified a pre-existing right because a lot of people are like, well, only militias need firearms. It says it right there, militia. A pre-existing right protects the individual's rights to possess a firearm unconnected with a militia for the lawful use of the fence within the home, not unlimited to keep any weapon, which basically said you can have your firearm in your home to protect you and your loved ones or yourself and your property. The fourth time was in Chicago. A uh, gentleman uh, was sick and tired of the city of Chicago saying that it was unlawful for him to possess or own a handgun. Believe it or not, in Cook County, you could not own a handgun. I was actually working at the U.S. Federal Building, the Dirksen Building there. The Second Amendment limits the state of... <laughs> sorry. The Second Amendment limits the state and local governments to the same extent that it does the federal government. That was the opinion that came down from out of that thing. So right now, city of Chicago... Guess what? You can have a handgun. It's almost next to impossible, but you can get one. All right, so right now, in speaking with the Second Amendment, how is the Second Amendment being violated? There's a number of states that have passed judgment rulings and done whatever they can through backdoor legislation to mediate you being able to protect yourself. Those states are California, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Massachusetts, Colorado, and Oregon. Those are just a few. I'm sure there are several more. I'm going to tell you about what's going on right now in this world. When a local government enacts ordinance and they violate our Bill of Rights. Deerfield, Illinois decided they were going to act on themselves and act on their own and they enacted an ordinance that said and within our city limits you are not allowed to possess or have on your person a semi-automatic rifle. Not just these AR-15s, but a semi-automatic rifle, nor a semi-automatic handgun except the magazine more than 10 rounds. That's regardless of whether you bought it, grandfathered in, or you had it for 10 years. It was a done deal. They're being sued right now. The cool thing about it is that Illinois is getting tired of it. The people are coming back. And this is the fight that I'm talking about. The reason we're all here right now is because we are here to join in on a local fight. What it's doing is it's creating a world without rule of law. But there are several counties in the Illinois, I think they're up to 16 right now, who've signed and voted on it to become a Second Amendment sanctuary county. They will not enforce the Illinois state laws in those counties. And what it's doing is it's sending a drastic measure and a, a message to Springfield and allowing them to know, hey, we're not going to put up with it any longer. So these people are speaking. That is a march for their rights. But what is happening is, is these cities become sanctuary cities. As cities and 
enact ordinances that are outside the measure of the Second Amendment, the states violating our Second Amendment rights, we are growing away from a lawful society. We are going unlawful every single day. When a city goes, well, we don't have to worry about uh, reporting illegal aliens. We'll just do our own thing. Just here in Mecklenburg County, we lost our last sheriff deputy, our sheriff, because he did, he was handing the illegal aliens over. That was a big no-no here in Mecklenburg County. We didn't even get the vote because he was all Democrat. I think one of the things I want to leave you guys with today is that we are what you call a silent majority. There's a lot of people, and I believe you are like, there are millions of people like me. And yes, sir, you're right. There are millions of people like Robin. There are millions of people like you guys. And the idea is that we need to start coming out of the woodwork. I've never met a person on the left side who was embarrassed about talking and telling their opinion right in your face without any care. We need to be the same way. So when somebody comes up to you and they want to start an argument, be prepared with be educated. Talk about the subjects that are applicable to you and your argument so that you can show a good forceful means. Because I'm sick of it. I had a guy the other day was telling me, uh, called me names. I've never met a more vile group, more angry group of people than the left wingers. They are evil and they are mean. They don't care about us. In closing, I always end my little speeches like this. And if you ever watch my videos, you'll know. And I go, support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform 24 seven for our freedom, because freedom is not free. I greatly appreciate everybody coming out here today. These are, you guys are true heroes to my book. It's hot, it's humid, and that's it. Guys, thank you so much.